something strange is happening in West Ham United at the moment because by the looks of it, we've, we've seen that we had many issues last season and that we needed to address those in the transfer market. And then we've actually addressed those issues in the transfer market. That is very unusual. We don't usually do that. We don't because, you know, we needed to improve our defence. So we brought in Kilman. We are still working on another centre-back, hopefully. And we will be bringing in a new right-back. Probably going to be wan -Bissaka. We knew that we needed to bring in cover or backup or competition for Edson Alvarez. And we have done that by bringing in Rodriguez, who will be announced later today. We needed a new left-winger. We have addressed that. We have brought in some of them. We needed a striker. And we have signed for Krug. Who, yeah, he is a 31-year-old German striker, but he is a player who has scored goals wherever he's been before. And I've got a feeling he's going to be a right bastard, and West Ham fans are going to love him. I've just got that feeling. He may be that striker who, who breaks the West Ham striker curse, because God damn have we had a striker curse over the years. But it's got to end eventually, and it could end with a 31-year-old German. Who would have thought that? We've also brought in a little bit of youth as well. And that means that we're actually left with a squad that um, has options. Yeah, it has options. Uh, we have squad depth. Uh, we've, we've got pace. We've got youth. We've got experience. We've got skill. We've got flair. We've got goals. Yeah, we still need to improve the defence. But, you know, that midfield area going forward, there's a lot of options there. A lot of options. And if we ever left in that situation like we were in January where we lose Bowen and Kudus and, and Pakatar, it's not going to be as big of a worry as it was last season. I'm not going to say it wouldn't be. It definitely would. But we've got better options now than we did back then. And obviously, you know, last January we made some terrible decisions in letting go Four Nils and Ben Rama as well. Leaving us in an even more precarious position than what we were. So I can't see that happening again. And yeah, things are starting to look look up a little bit. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do. Don't get me wrong. I've already mentioned the defence. And yes, Tim has done his job by bringing in uh, the, the players to help Lopetegui. But now it is down to Lopetegui to, you know, get those players to gel, to get them to play right and to, you know, fit into the way he wants to play and to make it work. And that is the question. Will he be able to do that? Tim's done his job. It's down to J-Lo now. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if... It, we're going to hit the ground running. I don't know if it's going to take a little bit of time. But he's now got the tools, or he's nearly got all the tools to to try and succeed. And I've I've got confidence. I've just got, I've just got a good feeling. I mean, I could be completely wrong. I could be completely wrong. It could be a terrible start. It could all go downhill. And we could end up getting a new manager by January. But I just don't believe that's going to happen. I've just, I've just got that feeling. I, I really do. And... Yeah, uh, it's strange, isn't it? I'm just not used to it. I don't think any of us are used to it. And the fact that we've got our business done, like, early, because last transfer window, like, the first game of the season last year, we had one signing over the line, which was Edson Alvarez. But he wasn't even eligible to play in our first game against Bournemouth. But by the, the first game that we will have against Aston Villa, we could have five, six, maybe even seven new signings in the squad. Very different situation, and you know, even the, the players that have come in this weekend, it's, it's Somerville, through quick and um, Rodriguez will have a little bit of time in pre season, just a you know, a week or so, but you know, to get to know their teammates, to to you know, work alongside Lopetecki and to start learning this new way of playing that, that we are trying to introduce. Now, obviously, we've seen our friendly so far against Wolves and Crystal Palace, and we haven't done particularly well. But as I said, there were some positives through that game. Uh, the fact that we were, you know, we were applying a lot more pressure, we were passing the ball a little bit faster, and yeah, they, we were playing a little bit of a higher line. Uh, I think Antonio put it best, saying that you know they got a new way of playing, and you know they they're, they're trying to press high, and it unfortunately sometimes it does leave gaps, and um, that's what they need to work on. They, need to work on the mistakes as well because we were making mistakes but at least they're making those mistakes in pre-season rather than you know a competitive game and going back to the you know the, the players that we brought in I know that some people have had like concerns over over Kilman and, and things like that but you can't judge any of these new signings any player until you've seen them in a game that actually matters pre-season they don't give a hundred percent they don't want to get injured it's about getting fit well, I've seen this have shocking pre-seasons and have fantastic runs in the league 
I think back in 1986, uh, when I was born actually, uh, I saw this that come up. We I think we lost every single preseason game and then went and finished third. Uh, Avram Grant's season where we finished bottom of the league, we didn't lose a preseason game. I think we won nearly we won all of them apart from one which we drew. Preseason means nothing, right? Absolutely bugger all when it comes to how a team is going to perform in the actual season. So we we can't really take too much notice of pre-season. It's just about getting the players up to fitness. And yeah, we're trying out new things. It's going to take a little time to adapt, but we're, 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 we're implementing it now. It's been implemented from the first game of the season. And hopefully by the time that we do face off against Aston Villa, we'll have things a little bit more together. We'll have everyone back and, you know, I'm sure that they're all going to be eager to, to show what they can do and hopefully we will see, uh, you know, much better performances than, than what we have seen. Even though I don't think the performances that we've been seeing in the game so far have been absolutely terrible. The first half, I think, uh, against Wolves and against Palace were, were good. We improved as we went on, but the second half lacked something a little bit, but I do wonder if that's because we, we, we were playing with such high intensity in the first half, we come to the second half, and because it's pre-season, there is a little bit of a lack of energy, but hopefully the energy levels will increase, the fitness levels will increase, and by the time you know we play Aston Villa, we're a lot more fit and raring to go. But that's where uh, squad depth also comes in, because if there are any players who are struggling, um, to play this high intensity for such a long time, we can make early subs. We can bring other players into the mix to try and help them out. We can rest players when we need to. If we get injuries, we've got cover. It's a nice position to be in for once. It really is because our squad has just not been big enough and we really could have done with this squad depth over the last couple of years. But hey, look, we, we move on. We're into this season now. We haven't got any European football. And yeah, I, I feel like it could be a very exciting season for us. But... We do also have to keep in mind that it could be a little bit of a transition. It could take a little while for us to get going and it might not click straight away. But we just have to sit by the manager and believe that these players will eventually get it right if they don't get it right straight away. So, yeah, things are looking up. Things are looking good. Signing number six um, uh, will be announced tomorrow and then hopefully we... Uh, We'll be looking at signing number seven by the end of the week and maybe even signing number eight. And you never know, we could be seeing signings number nine or ten at some point. I'm not saying that, but you never know. We could move on players like Socek or or maybe James Will Prowse or maybe Zuma, which could free up some funds so we could um, you know, bring in other players as well. That that is a possibility. But no, this transfer window is lining up to probably be our best ever transfer window. Definitely in my memory and I feel like every single player that we have brought in apart from maybe Fodrenham adds something and, and gives us options that we haven't had before so very very exciting head times ahead I definitely can say anyway I'm sweating under this heat I really am and uh, yeah uh, if you've liked this video please do not forget to subscribe uh, I will be live tonight uh, over on the West Ham Network uh, for Alex's TikTok Takeover. So if you want to uh, have a chat, ask me any questions, please pop over there. That'll be 9pm on Tuesday. Um, and if you want to see more regular updates, come follow me over on uh, TikTok at West Ham Fan 86 Anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Good evening, good morning, good night, whenever you are watching. And come on, you irons.